So what is the last, uh, what is the last full movie you've watched during this stay at home order? Uh, George and I watched The Fittest. Oh yeah? Did you enjoy it, Louise? Yeah, it was it's great. Inspired. It makes you want to go work out, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, we really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I watched uh, a movie from like the 80s, uh, Clue. Yeah. <laughs> I had never seen it. Nice. That's not a, that's a good movie to watch. Actually, it was really good. <laughs> We watched uh, Rear Window, the Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh. About a guy who can't leave his apartment. So it was like very quarantine appropriate. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I went into Bombshell, the, oh. uh, the Megyn Kelly show. Oh, okay. It was good. It was good. Allison? I had to watch All the President's Men class. That's the closest I've oh. Movie. Kathy, if you can hear us, what's the last movie you watched? I rented the Trolls World Tour. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes. Dude, that, I, sound, that soundtrack is off the chain. It is. It's pretty good. The, the bad part is I fell asleep in half of it, so I had to rewatch it again. Good thing good, you got though. that 48-hour rental for 20 bucks. Well, hell, actually, it was less than that. Was what? it? Hours. Yeah, nice. it's it's cheaper yeah, on Amazon. Yeah, because it just came out on. It, it was supposed to come out in the movies. That's why it was twenty bucks. <laughs> it was awesome. I thought it was worth it. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> no, my husband wasn't making comment. He's like, "Man, I, I hope I don't get a a stroke or a seizure because of all the all the, the colors." Yeah. yeah. All the techno trolls. You'll have to excuse me. I'm still rowing. I'm trying to finish a ten k row. Oh. Okay, Mark. But I'm listening. For, did you row for thirty minutes, Mark? I'm doing it today, right after this. All right. <laughs> Laura's done a thirty-minute row before. She knows what's up. Mm. Um. All right. I uh, I'll go ahead and kind of get stuff going a little bit. Um. Just because you know I want to be able to get all of this stuff you all want to get to in a timely manner. Uh, Frankie, maybe it looks like might be joining us um, and maybe some other people might pop in once we get started. Today I have um, a kind of a presentation on um, possible um, limiting factors that you might experience. They're pretty general. They apply to kind of like everything. But um, as I go through the PowerPoint, I will try to, you know, make a connection to like the COVID-19 and what we're, what we're handling right now. Um, if you have any questions while I'm rambling, um, I might mute you guys so you can just send it in a text box and I'll probably stop and answer it. And then at the end, I'll just like unmute everybody and just people can just, we can just discuss it freely. Um, so let me get started. Oh, and then we have a little challenge for everybody at the end. Um, I know that there's like a lot of challenges right now. If you need to focus your challenges, focus on the support your box and then the challenges that we give you. All right, let's see. Okay. Um, here we go. And present. Cool. All right, so everybody can kind of see that a little bit. I don't know if y'all's, um, I don't know the orientation of your boxes on your screen. So I hope you can see. If you can't see, it says, it says common, in, ugh, common limiting factors. And it says common limiting factors to fitness and health. And then, you know, some solutions. So hopefully some ideas and suggestions for some improvement. Wow. Okay, so I have um, kind of separated the limiting factors into different categories so that now some of them are, you can see that there'll be some overlap and you'll be like, hey, isn't this a food choice or isn't this a lifestyle habit? And it might be, um, but like I said, some of these things might have multiple categories, but I'm just gonna kind of separate them a little bit into food choices, eating behaviors, uh, exercise, training, movement, 
uh, exercise activity. If you're like, a, you know, a hardcore athlete, like training, uh, movement, if you're not able to do traditional exercising right now, maybe you're doing Pilates at home or making sure you're trying to stay active. Uh, recovery, life skills, um, mindset, like psychology, the environment. And then we have a micronutrient challenge at the end. Uh, that should be fun, I think. I tried to start it today myself to set a good example. So, so here we have food choices. In the left column, we'll talk about things that could be problematic. And then in the right column, I'll show you some solutions and, you know, uh, some ideas for some like elaborations on that. So uh, I'll just put all of the bullets out. There's four of them here. So eating too many processed foods or not eating enough whole unprocessed foods is a limiting factor. Uh, becoming dehydrated is a limiting factor. Drinking sugary drinks is a limiting factor. And then drunkorexia is a term that's defined loosely as eating less to leave room for alcohol calories. So um, I know, you know, I think I've alluded to this on a couple of these things before where the person is like, I think that there's a lot of good intentions behind it. Like, well, maybe I shouldn't have this cake if I know I'm going to have, you know, a sugary daiquiri or something later. And um, it, it, it's okay. It's like, okay to have those intentions, but you need to be careful with it because when you start removing food calories and putting alcohol calories in, it's not good. Um, so here's some ideas. So you can replace um one to two processed choices with a whole food so what i think of i i know i grabbed the frozen french fries quite a bit and yeah they're like the alexa or whatever whole food sells and they're they're better than you know if you get those frozen french fries and you bake them uh they are better than other stuff but uh it's it's pretty easy just to grab a baked potato there too so that's just kind of an example of like how you can take like, okay, maybe I'm drinking orange juice every day. All right, I'm gonna switch to an actual orange. Something as simple as that. Um, and it doesn't have to be really extreme to begin with. A lot of these things you're gonna notice have kind of a common theme of being um, small incremental changes. So uh, just a suggestion is just one to two choices with a whole food. And then I gave you guys an example. The dehydrated one, I really, I like the dehydrated one a lot. So what I would do is I, if you have some expendable income, like if you're, you know, if you're fortunate right now to still be doing okay, go buy like the coolest, most awesome water bottle you can possibly find. Something that you just love being around and then fill it up like religiously. Like maybe you decide that you're going to fill it up. You know, you can go back and look at Molly's hydration talk and find out some good recs. Uh, or you can ask us or ask me and you can go fill it up X amount of times a day. And I think that that's kind of like a fun way to stay motivated about drinking. Um, the drinking sugary drinks, I think you can progress to like diet soda, right? So we have some diet sodas or sugar-free sodas that are, uh, that don't have open quote, like chemically created close quote, artificial sweeteners. So they're maybe made with like stevia. Zevia is the one that comes to mind. So maybe go that and then maybe go there to like LaCroix or like some of those flavored waters. And you can even, again, if you're financially apt right now and you're looking for something to do and a new hobby, you can get like those soda stream machines and make your own soda water and stuff like that. But a lot of people are kind of addicted to the bubbles. So, um, you know, you can get bubbles. All right. And then the last one is, uh, like, I, I think that it's important to, to do small incremental change. And it could be a personal thing, but I find it really difficult to be like, okay, tomorrow is going to be the day. Because coming from the bottom all the way to the top is, is really difficult. But I think kind of like warming up and getting like that fly start into your run, being like, all right, by the end of quarantine, like let's pretend that we get back in the gym on May 16th at 5.30 a.m. And I want to be, be this person when I go back into the gym. So I'm going to work backwards from that, right? Right now, maybe right now, 
I, I want to drink one glass of wine a week a day before I go back to the gym. And right now I'm drinking four. So maybe I'm going to do three during the week and four on the weekends and then two during the week next week and three on the weekends and then one during the week and boom, all of a sudden I'm kind of there. Um, I think it's really uh, more difficult to like fall backwards on, on something like that. Uh, the next one's going to be eating behaviors, which kind of is like food choices, but a little bit different. So recognizing fullness and hunger cues, I think is a really big one right now during COVID-19. A lot of us, including myself, are doing boredom eating. Uh, irregular eating habits, like missing meals. I think that this happens more frequently when we're like in the hustle bustle of regular life. Like, oh, maybe I have a parent-teacher conference early in the morning, so I miss breakfast or like, you know, whatever. Um, overeating and then using food to manage your feelings. So. We have keeping a journal to reflect on hunger and eating and boredom throughout the day. It doesn't really have to be a journal, but if you have a dry erase board every time you go like, or a piece of paper in your kitchen, every time you go into the pantry or into the kitchen or whatever, it's like, is this planned meal or is this boredom meal? Is this planned? And don't even like, don't, don't give yourself a hard time. Just track it for a little bit and see how, like like how good or bad you might be you might be like oh man i reached in the pantry five times because i was bored outside of my already you know 2400 allotted calories of the day so something to think about um create an eating schedule and, and or food prep one meal of the day um i think that one meal is kind of easy like you can always food prep lunches you know or um crock pot meals are really good um, and then that way, if you do get into a situation where you're pressed for time or whatever, you don't have preparation and cleanup as well. You just have to eat. Uh, the overeating. So this one, a lot of this stuff is like really closely related to the precision nutrition text, but this is just something that I kind of came up with on, on my own. I think that a lot of times, so I, this is ironic. So I do this with like spaghetti and red beans and rice. Like I'm always like, I'm going to eat, like I always over portion my plate. So what I would suggest is like, think about like under portioning your plate. Thank you for the popcorn. Think about under portioning your plate. And then like, if you're hungry 10 minutes later, then go back and eat a little bit more. Um, that's, that's if you are not like strictly macro counting, right? If you're portioning based off of like palm, protein, thumb fat, and fistful of carbs, then maybe do that. And then if you're still hungry a little bit later, eat. But I think everybody, I think it's kind of common knowledge that it takes a little bit of while for those fullness cues to kind of set in once you actually are full. And then um, choose one practice other than eating that would be like to handle your feelings other than eating. So like, I don't think if you are like, you know what, I'm going to work really hard all week. And then I have a, a meeting with my coworkers at 9am on Saturday, and I'm going to have a half a pint of ice cream after that, like, go for it. But I'm talking about like the daily management of feelings. Like think about doing something different that's beneficial for you. Like, all right, so I think about eating right now, one minute in a couch stretch on both legs. Like, um the couch stretch might not be your thing but some something like that um maybe you can get a, a like get in i'm sure people are into all kinds of books maybe if you're into a non-fiction or whatever and that's your i mean a fiction book and that's your, like your normal pleasure read you can have like a non-fiction book and like every time you feel like eating you just read a page of your book um i know i know that there could be a lot of holes poked in these solutions so. They're just suggestion. Uh, exercise and movement. Uh, I'm not getting enough physical activity. I'm overtraining and not appropriately handling training loads, which, which believe it or not can happen when you're left to your own devices to just be creative about workouts and you have a lot of time on your hands because uh, it's fun. Um, so this is one that I, I think is really good that I kind of stole from a couple people on this call because I know that they do it and they sign up for a certain number of classes, either at the beginning of the month or at the beginning of the week. So 
you know, for the next four weeks, we're going to have Zoom classes multiple times a week. Like, sign up for one, even if it's not a class. So it's about commitment. I know it's exercise and movement, but if it's like, I want to be held accountable, even if it's just being on this call or being on Jeff's call or whatever, like, you know, you can start there and sign up for that at the beginning of the week and kind of uh, hold you accountable. You can also commit to a minimal number of activities and treat it instead of like, if I don't get it, I'm not perfect. Every time you do get something, you get to put like a bead in the jar. So every time you do something, you get rewarded and you'll be like, oh, if I can get all my activity points done by Thursday or whatever, you know, it'll, it can become like a little game with yourself. Uh, and then we're obviously here to help you program your training schedule load. Like, hey, I'm doing, you know, the, this quarantine classic and this challenge and y'all's workout and whatever else. Like, it feels like it's too much. Can y'all help me? Absolutely. At any time, we can help you guys figure that stuff out. And we're sitting here wanting to do that. So please just let us know. Um, all right, so recovery is next, not getting enough sleep. Uh, ironically, I was on a call with my coach, that's in flux, but my coach today, and I was like, the one thing that's like a thousand times better right now is my sleep, because I'm not teaching 5.30 a.m. classes. So um, if you are getting good sleep right now, like try to maintain it, and if you're not, um, we'll, I'll throw a bullet point to the other side to come up with some fun stuff. Not not necessarily fun, just like practical stuff. So I think it'll work. <laughs> not getting enough recovery, and then whoop. I know a couple of people on the call have whoop strap, so I wanted to go over my jealousy and what I think about the whoop strap. Um, I think it's a really valuable tool, but I'm jealous. Um, all right, so this is this is a good bedtime. Uh, Kaizen sort of small incremental step principle. So aim to start a bedtime routine five minutes earlier per day until where you want to be. So maybe you have a bedtime routine right now. Maybe it is fall asleep watching Sports Center on the couch. Um, I would say maybe I'll do a presentation on sleep and then we'll talk about that at that point in time. It wouldn't be the best sleep routine, but let's pretend that that's your sleep routine. You start watching like Sports Center, I don't know, at 7.30 p.m. And then that takes that puts you at a 10 p.m. bedtime. Then just start five minutes earlier and see what happens. Um, and then work your way to where you want to be. Some people aren't, don't need to start to sleep earlier. I think most people are missing sleep hours on the, the nighttime time going to sleep rather than the waking. Um, but maybe you don't, um, you know. But if you do think about, hey, I want to be to bed by 10, I get to bed right now at 11, so I need to, I need to take 60 minutes off of that bike ride. Y'all don't have, I'm sorry, sorry. All right, um, for recovery, uh, the O3 is omega-3 supplement and commit to five to 10 minutes of relaxation and mobility work each day. I do like the omega-3 supplements. This question could have been um, addressed by uh, some sort of healthy supplementation that allows you to promote recovery. So like maybe your supplementation is creatine monohydrate or, or maybe your supplementation is branched chain amino acids or something like that. But if some sort of recovery aid supplement is um, – you know, you have to be consistent with that too. Like you have to take it um, like it says to be taken. If it's not something you're doing and all of your other ducks in a row can be something to think about. Five to 10 minutes of relaxation or mobility work each day. Uh, we have the cool downs. Uh, you can also pick something that you want to do, right? So like the cool downs vary depending on what the demands are. But if you know you have tight shoulders and you want to do a shoulder routine every day, Send me, a, send me a direct message and I'll give you a shoulder routine. Uh, listen to your body and listen to your whoop strap. Those of you who do have recovery tracking tools, I know certain watches do it. I know the whoop strap does it. They are really valuable, but 
if you wake up and you feel like a million dollars and you were supposed to work out that day and your group strap says you're not recovered and you feel like a million dollars, just go for it. Um, those, those days when the iron is hot or whatever are, are few and far between. And if you, if you found the miracle cure to recovery for that day, jump on it and get a day of training. in. That, that being said, if you feel run down badly, you're getting a cough, especially during this sort of stuff, then like, even if your whoop strap says like, you should train today, then, you know, give it a second thought, but it's a really valuable tool. It's great for motivation, I think. Um, but you know, like I said, I know the demographic of the people on this call. And if you have a good day, take advantage of it. I include myself in that demographic. I mean, no offense to anyone. All right. Life skills, food prep or cooking skills. I know you guys have some of these because I get pictures of wonderful looking food, shopping skills, making impulsive choices. So if you don't uh, have good food prepping skills, I would pick one meal that can leave you some leftovers and learn like one meal. Like maybe you do it every week for a month and then you kind of have it down. Realsimple.com has so many recipes that are, you know, eight ingredient recipes, 45 minute recipes, 20 minute recipes. So all kinds of stuff on there um, that's really valuable. Um, another thing you can do, I think the next bullet point alludes to it, is they have, uh, uh, that shop with a list, but okay, here we go. So they have, you know, like HelloFresh and Blue Apron. They basically like, like you do the cooking, but the recipe is prepared for you and most of the ingredients are washed or chopped or portioned out or whatever, and they just send it all to you. So that could be a good way to stay away from, um, you know, to, to honor the stay at home order and to kind of get your sand legs or your sea legs or whatever, uh, sand legs are a volleyball term, but like, you know, your feet under you uh, when you start thinking about cooking. And then, with the impulsive choices, like this is just the answer to it. If you don't want to eat Oreos, don't have Oreos in your house. If your child wants to have Oreos and you're okay with it, let that child have Oreos in his or her room. Do not have like out of sight, out of mind, and you, you will not be tempted by it. And it will be, it will be a lot easier for you. All right. So psychological, Sorry, my PowerPoint's a little weird. I have to keep moving my box over. All right, so the all or nothing mentality, which you guys, if you don't know me by now, like I, I don't really, I don't think it works for a lot of people, but I, I, I do. I mean, I give people that caveat. Like if you're a cold turkey person, then go cold turkey. Um, but I think that you can reward yourself for less than uh, all or nothing. Um, Fixed mindset, teachers know what that is, consistency, and then business and stress. So eat this, not that is like, I think a really good all or nothing mentality, incremental change. But in order to get positive about this and get motivated about it, you have to find some kind of way to track it or log it. Because it's not going to seem like if you put, like, let's pretend that you're your incremental change might be like, I want to add one like leafy green to my diet every day. And other things are going by the wayside, right? Like you're drinking a little bit more, you're not exercising as much, but you're consistent with your like leafy greens. When you wake up in the morning and you eat a salad or you, you have your leafy green that day, it's not going to seem that impactful because it's only one leafy green one day. But if you were able to see the amount of consistency you've had with that, I think Sam, so you, you guys know Kate's husband, Sam had uh, like 900 days of macronutrient tracking. And I think that that's crazy. But I think the, the point of it is that like, it started by just doing one day at a time. 
And I think that that incremental change should happen like one, one at a time. So like, yes, if you think about having a third glass of wine instead of two and you stop and you say, oh shoot, I still had two glasses of wine. Like, no, you won because you didn't have three. And I think that you should get a thumbs up for that. And it doesn't feel super impactful at the time because you didn't drink no wine, but it is definitely better. And those little steps can create really lasting change. Yeah, try to put a positive spin on everything. Like it's a challenge, it's a game. You're gonna give yourself some kind of reward, right? Maybe don't use food rewards for food challenges, but maybe use, hey, you know what? Like. I like Jordans and maybe I want to be like, if I track everything for two months, I'll allow myself to buy a pair of shoes. I don't know. Maybe that's not yours, but that, that I might run that one by Elizabeth when she comes back inside. Uh, yeah, I kind of alluded on a lot of that stuff to that third bullet point. And then for the business and stress, I think that the mindfulness apps are really easy and powerful and it can help you create a routine like, hey, five minutes before bed, I'm going to do the calm, like, before sleep routine. A lot of them are free. A lot of them are free for educators. I, I am looking at at least three educators on this call. Um, I think that they have certain uh, special, like, promotions and whatnot now for the COVID-19 situation. So those are really great, easy resources that just, like, different little mindfulness and meditation uh, sites I think are good um all right and then environment so being an environment that requires a lot of willpower I think that this kind of goes along with like not having a bunch of temptations around your house so you know um not having the food around your house uh like if you are into kind of recreational activities I don't know I don't want to be like hide your books Hide your Nintendo Switch and only let yourself play at 5 p.m. after you've done all your exercise. Uh, an unsupportive social network. This is the one of the most difficult things, I think. I know it's like one little line at the very last or second to last slide that says environment, but the unsupportive social network is tremendous. The, it, but it works the other way too. So if you have a supportive social network, whether it's training or eating or at your house, um, or if it's like, hey, Paul and Gina are gonna hold themselves accountable to their Mindspace app or George and Louise or Matt and Laura or whoever, like that's, like, that's a supportive social network. Try to create as many of those as you can. Um, and like, we'll try to be here for you guys as much as possible on Zoom to be part of that network as well. Yeah, I so kitchen purge is a really good thing to do. Uh, it's very difficult to do. Um, I think that it's a little easier just to go and buy a bunch of good stuff because the good stuff will go bad first if you don't eat it. So I saw Allison's card the other day. It looked really great. And it, it like it motivated me a little bit. It motivates you. Go buy good groceries. It's fun. Plus, you could take a picture and you could put it on Instagram and be like, look at all these good groceries I'm getting. Uh, yeah, bring your friends along for the ride. So if you have someone in your home that's not part of this, I don't know if that applies to anyone on here, but maybe like introduce them to a little part of your life. It might be something that's uh, cool and it can help you stay con accountable and it can help them uh, stay fit. Um, if this is your thing that you need to keep to you and let your significant other have their thing, his or her thing, then that's cool too. Um, but you know, this could be just a, like I said, these are just suggestions. These are not how you need to solve these problems. In conclusion, the one thing I wanted to say is that like all of these themes are about like you making active choices. So I'll read it. One overarching theme about all the limiting factors is that it requires a conscious choice to overcome them. Unconscious decisions put you, put them in your face, right? These are situations that are not in your control sometimes. So like, that's what a limiting factor is. A situation that gets placed in your face, you have to make a choice to overcome it. Like you can't passively overcome a limiting factor, I guess is the point. 
that I'm trying to make. I'm not trying to be like um, aggressive about it. Um, like I know that circumstances put people in um, positions that make these things very hard to overcome. I'm not saying slap, snap your hands and fix the problem. I'm saying I recognize that the limiting factors are products of circumstances, but we have to we have to take charge and make choices to overcome those circumstances. So the last thing we have before I'll um, open up the forum is uh, we have a challenge for you all. And it is, oops, it is a micronutrient challenge. So it is uh, how many of servings of each color um, micronutrient or you get, I would say plant, but I'm pretty sure fungus is, um, you know, you get micro, micronutrients from fungus too. So I think that's on there as far as the phytonutrients. I'm pretty sure mushrooms are whites. Anyway, regardless, um, this gives you an example of a bunch of foods that fit into these five color groups. And you can try to eat one to, uh, you know, one cup is what they say, but if you can't, sometimes you get more spinach and less strawberries, but um, if you can get one of these each day, um, that'll be your challenge. Um, the phytonutrient print cheat sheet, I will do my best to try to make an easy downloadable copy available for you all at the conclusion of the day today so that you can see it. But know that we're going to have five categories, greens, reds, whites, yellows, and purples. Bananas are whites. They're not on there, but bananas are whites. And um, some of the things are not what you think they are, right? So strawberries and blackberries are purples. Um, sweet potatoes could be purples. Hannah's sweet potatoes are yellow. Yams are, 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 are red, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, I just wanted to point out that you can use this to classify your foods. And then you can try to get, you know, it's going to require you to get five different fruits and vegetables. Um, if you have a salad that has, you know, lettuce and tomatoes, and it's a half a cup of tomatoes or a cup of tomatoes, that counts as two. Um, I would say just try to get some serving in first, like, and then work towards the quantity. So if you're like, oh, I can't add these strawberries because I don't know if they're a full cup or not, just add the strawberries and count them. And then like maybe next week, we can up this challenge a little bit and uh, think about trying to count our, our quantity of these as well. So I am going to stop the screen share and I am going to, I don't know, Jeff maybe can help me with this. Can you? Can you unmute everybody, Jeff? Or they can unmute themselves. Melting at 32, it melts at a lower point. But so then how does that help in freezing? Of <laughs> All right, so everybody's unmuted at this point. Does anybody have any questions? Anything to add? To subtract? What was that thing you were talking about earlier? I even forget what it was called. To help track your recovery? Oh, the whoop strap? Mm. What is that? Uh, the whoop strap. Look at all these people on this call that have the damn thing. Mark, you got one too? <laughs> no. You don't have one? No. Mark, Mark, I thought you had everything. Everyone no, what does it do? <laughs> oh, don't tell Mark, man. Um, it's like, a, uh, it's an activity sleep recovery tracker and you wear it all the time and it it links to apps and like the cool kids have, look they all have their group man they're all in a group <laughs> together they, they know how much each other each other person sleeps and stuff i'm a little bit i'm obviously jealous but it's fine that's cool. a loop strap gina uh but never heard of i that. think like brandon maybe that needs to be your reward instead of jordan's <laughs> yeah, the reward that keeps on charging you month after month. Yeah. Um, well, the Jordans are super practical right now because um, I don't have a, a, I don't have anybody to wear them around. So, um, 
I, in a practical way, Gina, I think like if you have an eye watch or some sort of like sleep tracking device or pedometer, just like basically using some technology or tool to help you track activity and recovery uh, is an option. Um, that's all that comment was really supposed to be about. I, um, I read today that uh, CrossFit Algiers, uh, they did a fitness challenge. It got coverage on Morning Chalk Up, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, they did a quarantine nutrition challenge, and they had a bunch of people lose weight. I think it's really hard to just go with the flow during this. I think some people kind of dive in, and they're like, I am going to be the person I want to be when I come out of this burrow. And some people are like, why am I even trying if I'm just stuck in this burrow? And I think some of us are in between and we have days where we feel that way and days where we feel different. I think just if I can empathize with y'all, I'm, I'm hoping to be around people again when this next order is, is complete, the, the timeline. Um, and uh, I, I have some like mental goals that I want to be, you know, I want a hundred minutes of handstand practice before that or whatever. And I think that that's really helpful for me right now. I think being able to see the, the end and then make benchmarks backwards is a lot easier than just being like, well, I guess, you know, I, I'm going to eat, I'm going to track for some undetermined period of time and then, I'll just do that and then no one will ever notice because I won't ever go to the gym and no one will ever see me and no one will ever see me lift or run or, and I think that it's hard, but if you can just keep in mind, like you're this, you're this lab technician, you're Dr. Frankenstein, you're behind this lab, like this curtain and no one can see it. And you have all the time, all the time in the world to create exactly what you want to create. When that curtain gets pulled away and we're back in the gym, you can be like, you can reintroduce yourself to the community. And I think that that's, that's the only way to kind of stay the course. Um, for me, it is like, I think just like trying to be passive and letting, Oh, like I'll figure it out tomorrow or whatever. Um, all right. I got to check. I'll figure it out tomorrow or whatever. is like not a, not a great answer. Uh, how will you know unless you're strong? Well, you could video yourself. Jeff wants to know. Oh, everybody can see it. How will we know how strong you are unless you show us? I think you can video, right? Everybody has taken video. I've seen a video of almost every single person on this call working out. Um, and they look super strong. If it's not, if it's not on video, it did not happen. <laughs> From a, para, from a perpendicular angle so we can see your range of motion. Do you guys have anything else? I have a question. <clears throat> what, um, what are some good uh, tools for us to measure uh, like nutritional goals? Um, like I started using, um, I think it's my fitness pal app yeah. to start tracking things and stuff. I mean, yeah. is there a better way to, I don't know, look at data that, or measurements, I guess. In that? I think my fitness pal is pretty, um, popular. I think it syncs to a lot of different platforms, like maybe WAG and RP. I'm not sure. I, I don't, don't quote me on that, but, um, I, whatever works for you. Um, I've gone back and forth with this. I've tracked using an app before and it was really helpful because like if I went, you know, to Jason's Deli or whatever, I could just be like tuna melt from Jason's Deli and it'd pop up. And then I've also done like a book. I, I just scribing things sometimes works for me. So I just keep a book around and I, I write it down that way. Um, but as far as like, actual physical tools i think a food scale you can get on amazon for probably 12 bucks and then you know cups like half cup full uh quarter cup and tablespoons um it's fun i mean it's not it's not fun it's fun it's like 
it's something to it's something to do once just to feel it just to see what it's like just to get your eyeballs good at tracking and just to see where you like you know just be like oh i'm eating pretty good you know i'm close to my protein or whatever and then you like add it up and you're like oh i'm just like 72 grams off of my protein it's no big deal <laughs> A lot of these, a lot of these things like that are real hypothetical. There are not hypotheticals. They're real things that have happened to me. Like that yeah, specific everyone. thing happened to me yesterday. So after the the conversation last, uh, we did everybody start measuring their macros or like everybody on the call? Did you guys start doing that? Anybody? No. <laughs> Laura, do you measure right now? I do. I use um, RP. Mm -hmm. and I've been using RP templates for like two years. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I figured the quarantine would be a good time to cut because I can't go out to eat and yeah. like, I'm not tempted by people bringing treats to work or anything like that. So, yeah. So I'm cutting right now. Cool. Um, so yeah, Mark, some of the, uh, some of the different like providers that do, um, like macro programming uh, have, I guess, apps that go with them. Um, I, I do not, I don't have my own app yet. Um, I don't know, I can talk to Jeff about making me one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that, that's kind of how I would track. Um, I used an app called LifeSum. It's way less popular than um, MyFitnessPal, but I found it super helpful and very educational to find out what is in the food I'm eating. Like, for example, beans, like, whoa, beans is not a protein. Greens, beans is a carbohydrate. Oh, girl. And stuff like that. Yeah. And also the app lets you, um, if you're doing a lot of cooking, you can put in all the ingredients and it will like do all the macros for you. So I found that really helpful with using the app. Just a side note, beans are not the most ideal protein source. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Gina had it pegged right. It's really a carbohydrate. Yeah, that was disheartening. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Mark, I use the MyFitnessPal, um, but I had to measure everything. And the tedious part was just measuring everything with a, a little food scale and uh, and once you, you get better with it by, you know, eyeballing things, but once I stopped eyeballing and I just fell off the bandwagon, it's, it's, it's something you really have to dedicate yourself to it. Yeah. You can't really, Kathy's right. You can't really do it like half speed. You got to write everything down or write nothing down. Yeah. Um, and you have to, if you want to be technical, you got to measure it too. So you like get a food scale and measure how much I, I, I tried that RP template. It's hard. Yeah, I've got food scale that if you enter a code and then like put the food on there, it'll give you the macros for the food. Like there's a code for like sweet potatoes. If you put a sweet potato oh. on, it tells you all the macros for Dang. that like, sweet potato. That's yeah. pretty awesome, Laura. Oh, what's the make and model of that scale? <laughs> uh, <laughs> While Laura's going to check uh, her food scale, I was going to say one other thing you can do, Mark, is you can buy things and portion them out so if you go buy a pound of grass-fed beef you can like portion it out into four burgers and you know that each one of those burgers are going to be quarter pound burgers and you can kind of do it like that like yeah i'll do that with deli meat i'll be like all right i want a pound and a half of deli meat and then i'll be like all right i want however many five ounce you know portions of the deli meat and i'll just boom 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 and then your food like that's another benefit of food prepping. You already know the macros in the thing, so you just eat it. Cool. Laura, did you find your scale? Um, I found it, but it just says Greater Goods is the brand name, but I know it's a specific like model. That's cool. We can Greater Goods is great. I got it on, um, Amazon. Awesome. Get the new food scale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the um. It's like the four dollar one. $4. So it's like the Greater Goods Nourish Digital Food Scale. Look, if you have two people in your house that are weighing and measuring food, and like, you spend forty dollars on less. 
I've had it for like a year. Yeah. So. You you spend forty dollars on less. Um, is there anything that you guys might not necessarily have questions about, but you would like to be presented to you, like in future? These things. Mm -hmm. Do you think, if, if not, so you guys have been on a lot of these calls. Um, is there anything that you think would be more appealing to the masses? If, I don't know. I guess nutrition is not as fun to talk about and listen to for a lot of other people. I find it really helpful though. I find the nutrition ones really helpful. Because that's my biggest struggle. Well, Louise, I, I, I would hope that, like, just on a very, like you said about the fittest, right? All you're mm -hmm. doing is you're just watching the movie. You're participating mm -hmm. in that experience, and it makes you feel good about working out, and it gets you motivated. Yeah. So just yeah. dialoguing about us here, nutrition, and, like, participating in the experience, I'm hoping it, it helps you guys be like, yeah, all right, really you know what? Thing. I, I want to be motivated again. I want to be motivated again today. Um, and I don't know. I appreciate y'all's um, regularity on it. It's neat that we're kind of getting people to, you know, because the information kind of kind of builds on the previous day. Do um, most people cook their own foods? Do most, most people, people are dealing with right here? I cook my own stuff, but I find that the girls don't really, they get tired of it. And like, I'm trying to be healthy for me and George and they're like chicken again. And <laughs> I'm kind of running out of trying to give some more variety. What, um, so Louise, if you, if they could choose something for you to cook that they enjoyed, what would they choose? Or are they just like, I would just rather eat out than home cook food? Like no matter what. Um, well, at the moment they're preferring to eat like takeaway. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, we don't want chicken again, and you know, I, I try to kind of have healthy stuff and you know present that to them, and they just sometimes they'll have it, but other times they'll be like, can we not get canes or Reginellis? <laughs> right. So I I guess that I guess what I was trying to get to the point of is like if you cook them anything they wanted like mm -hmm. would that be better or is the crux of it them getting takeout food like i don't like let's pretend that you got bell and evans chicken and you uh crusted it in like gluten-free potato mm -hmm. breadcrumbs and you fried it in coconut oil and then you cut up a potato and baked it and like mm -hmm. put salt on it and called those fries like mm -hmm. that's that's not good in, like what do they is there is there any dish you cook that you're like oh man i love my mom's like bangers and mash i'm not sure what you guys make but like <laughs> something like that um yeah i mean they do they like um like beans and rice and okay they, they like mac and cheese and and they do like um chicken occasionally but i, I kind of i know george wants to have like fewer carbs and you know, I'm trying yeah. to keep him happy and. Mm. Ooh, girl, that sounds tough. <laughs> I think I like your idea of the um, the blue ribbon. Um, yeah. I, I think I'm going to try that. Um, it's it's cool. Uh, Elizabeth and I went back and forth with it for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. but like we like things about it. Um we like leftovers right so if we mm -hmm. if we're gonna dirty up our kitchen like we'd like to have a night off the following night so yeah. we started going from like the two-person meals to the four-person meals and they also do uh they also do specific whole 30 compliant meals through blue apron so if you mm -hmm. wanted to do whole 30 compliant they would do mm -hmm. whole 30 compliant and they give you all of the macros broken down per serving with mm -hmm the ingredients in like a card that comes in your box. Sounds so, great. And, and you know, 
I like the food that I make too, as far as the healthy food, but like, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. It's a change of pace, you know, so maybe it might be something, you know, and yeah. you, can pick them, you can show them the menu ahead of time and you can say, Hey, is there anything on here that y'all might like to eat? You know, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for sure. It's a great And then once you figure out what they like to eat, steal the recipe and start cooking it yourself. <laughs> That's, yeah. You can. Yeah, I definitely. mean, you can do that, Paul. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> we do it all the time. I feel so lucky because Gina and I are like a serious team when it comes to the kitchen work and there's no one else. Yeah. No kids to cook for. No kids to cook for. <laughs> kids. Oh, home for three days like day, every day. What's that, Allison? This is just like the kids are home all the time. So it's yeah. like cooking three meals a day, yeah. three people every day. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of it, but you know, whatever. It's what it is now. They're tired of my cooking. I'm tired of cooking. It's tired of everyone over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if I'm on, I read head pains today. I, I think it's just like, we are all, we all have a lot of plates juggling on sticks right now and I think that you know when it's all said and done it's just like it's better if we have more plates up than we kill ourselves trying to keep all of our plates up and I think that picking our battles with our children to like set an example for them to uh, give them healthy options to keep them emotionally happy to keep them emotionally happy when like they're going through the same stuff as we are right now. Right. Like different, but like, re like we're not setting up play dates or we're re not doing or seeing anyone. So like, maybe he's like, it's, it, it could be really, we need to be cautious to s make sure that, that, that our children are not succumbing to some of the same limiting factors that the presentation had, like, you know, like, eating out of boredom and like not getting enough quality nutrients and stuff like that mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. um you know because they might have the same or similar emotional you know that they, they're probably not excited about what's going on right now either mm -hmm. i think because there's like a lot of people on this call that don't have kids maybe like they can they can each take one of our kids for a day <laughs> like Camille and Ben can go by Frankie and Nikki's house and then Reed can go by Gina and Paul's house yeah, we'll think, yeah. I'll take Jeff's kids too yes yeah. <laughs> to babysit so I could farm your out. children return with bad habits I assure you <laughs> Mark, I think Mark's looking for some kids to just like try out and see what I have two dogs that are a handful <laughs> Mark, I'll let you have my three girls, okay? <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, not, not that I'm the epitome of health or anything of that nature, but I do a lot of uh, food prepping for myself. And uh, Nikki and I are definitely on completely different like wavelengths of nutritional intake, where she looks at caloric intake and I don't, I don't give a shit on how much calories I'm taking in. I'm more concerned with getting the amount of uh, macros that I need. I never count the actual calories themselves. Um, I never count vegetables uh, or greens because I eat way more greens than I think more than five people probably should eat in a day. Um, and what I, like for perspective, like I'll eat a whole head of butter lettuce, I'll eat 10 ounces of kale with another 10 ounces of spinach and a pound of radishes. I'll be like, that'll be my salad with my breakfast of 12 eggs. Um, but I know that if I don't get those greens in, then I don't digest my proteins correctly and I don't get the absorption rates from all the nutrients. Where Nikki will be like, I'm gonna have a granola bar and maybe an egg. Uh, <laughs> so we're, one, we have, like my refrigerator is full of, of my food and Nikki has like a little area. <laughs> so, That's because yeah. most of Nikki's, is Nikki right there? No, she's, she's not. That's because most of Nikki's food can be in a pantry because it's par it's not perishable. It is true. It's mostly carbs. She eats a lot of sugar. Um, where I don't eat sugar. Uh, the other thing is too, where I'm prepping a lot of food, and I did before, um, but I created relationships with different restaurants, even the ones that are open now, to where uh, I'll cook food just to be fuel. Like I don't really care. Like I care that it tastes good, but 
I just know that I need like 16 ounces of chicken breast and X amount of some sort of fat to get to where I need to be. Um, so I really don't care how good it tastes. I just want the fuel because I look at it like a machine and I'm just feeding the machine to run efficiently. Uh, but sometimes the machine wants something that tastes good. So I'll create relationships with individuals like Kathy has a good business that makes food that could potentially create uh, meals for me to fit in my dietary constraints, which I assure you there's not a lot of restaurants that like to do that, but there are a handful out there that do. So where Louise, you have a handful of people that have different dietary restrictions or needs and or wants. Um, there are restaurant tours or people that are doing business right now that would be apt to hear what you have going on. Obviously, if you're willing to pay, of course, but uh, that can help out as well. Okay, yeah, thank you. Like Kathy looks like she's real busy. Yeah, just, you know, I'd love to help out and contribute, but the fact that my business is still closed, and that control pushed it to May 16th now. Oh, I don't want to think about that right now. Yeah. I'd love to support. And, I, you know, my business, I would be happy to provide. And when I do have customers, I, they, they come and talk to me. They're like, hey, you're, you look fit. What should I eat that's healthy? But at the end of the day, though, I can tell them what suggests that what they should eat. But at the end of the day whether or not they choose to take that starch or the thing that i suggested that's all on them i can't force somebody to eat something you know and so for here what we're talking about 